we have teachers as well as parents who are concerned about uh, making podcasts, maybe using uh, names in those podcasts, and then posting them to the internet for general consumption. And that's why I thought we'd better deal with this issue. And Colin may be able to weigh in on this in ways that he is able to deal with it as well. But um, with all of the, the new media production that we have uh, possible, this is a constant concern. One being using pre-recorded music by our favorite artists, which students prefer to do. And the second one in terms of using their names and then posting it so that um, their privacy is a little bit at risk. Colin, you'd like to speak to this at all? Oh, sure. Um, well, I, I find that first off that if it's just an audio recording, that you're totally not having the pictures of the kids. So right away, you're kind of one degree away from doing bad stuff. Uh, if it's just there speaking. Uh, so it's kind of a safe area with that respect. Secondly, uh, if I'm going to post anything, uh, just knowing the kids and I mean, I guess typically the worst case scenario is somebody uh, doesn't want to be found is in your classroom, per se. Uh, so what I do is I make sure and get a permission slip, which I draw up myself to ask for permission to do these things. Um, now, there's already that kind of media release th uh, thing that, that kids sign. I make sure and explicitly say um, in our class, we're doing a unit now on audio recording. And I'm going to post it here, and in and I want your your explicit permission. So I, that's one thing that I I do as well. Um, in terms of intellectual property, uh, well, I I always make sure that none of that uh, none of popular music enters into the into the realm of the podcast. I'm lucky that uh, in my lab I have all Apple computers. And full disclosure, I'm a big Apple guy, and I've done work for Apple's. One thing I like about GarageBand, it's awesome for podcasting, and it has all the loops and all that stuff already built in, so kids don't have to go other places to get loops and all that background sound effects. However, uh, the typical the typical non-Apple uh, choice would be Audacity, which is a great audio recorder, but you're going to have to bring in the stuff from outside. But there is enough, with a simple Google search, there's enough websites available that um, have this royalty-free music that you can download and you can insert um, for your kids. Often if there's a certain, um, in workshops I've done with Audacity or if I've done work with kids in our PC lab with Audacity, I usually go and pre-load the computer with 10 or you know 20 different sound, sound intros that they could use and that saves them from searching on the internet um, for stuff. Uh, that's one way. It's maybe uh, if you do want your kids to be able to find stuff themselves, then just point them in the direction of websites that are very explicit about free sounds. You know, um, you know, sometimes royalty free is not free. Like royalty free, I think, and Neil, maybe you can help me, but. Royalty free is I can use it without paying a royalty, but it maybe I mean I, I may have to pay a price to actually use it. But basically, there are si there are sites out there, and maybe I can do a little search for some no, while we're talking that offer free stuff, so people you don't have to go anywhere. Do the um, and kids will say, "No, I really want to use." Well, I, Sorry, I think, uh, ahead, I think people can go out just as you say and do their own search and discover things. In fact, that's something that the students might take on as a project, and it'd be useful for them to know. That they can get uh, stock sure. sound or royalty free. Uh, and I mentioned free play here because it's one that teachers have mentioned to me, uh, and you can get uh, you can get right. Uh, so uh, people can can take a look around. Uh, the other the other thing is that uh, you just don't post it. But most students want these things posted because the fun of producing them is the fun of, of putting them out there. And that's why the other reason why I brought this up. And I think that I think that's a very valid goal in terms in terms of having authentic audience and things like that. That 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 makes it that much more exciting, and it also gives you that hook for look. You need to do a better job of editing that. It, you can't have that little 
those little pops or hisses or whatever, you know, if you're going to publish it. That's a good the other thing, the other thing too, I'd say, go ahead, sorry. I'll be quiet. I'm done. The other thing that I was going to say is there are an awful lot of kids out there. If you just give them the idea, like maybe you could compose something yourself or especially teenagers. They all have bands going. You have music departments. Collecting your own sound effects is like that is, I mean, that's something I do all the time. I have a sound effects library of my own that's about 3,000 sound effects. And that is just, that's a fun thing for kids to do. And you can build whole plays around sounds that they gather, build up the sound effects library for the, from the school and also the music library so that all of, a lot of your music is actually coming from stuff that your students generate. That's a very good idea. Thank you. I, I think. Also, I'll notice that if you're a TDSB teacher, if you're on the TDSB program site for ICT, they had, they list a bunch of sites that you can go to for free music, for free sounds anyways. That's it. Victoria, what are some of the sites that you've used when you share student work? Oh, gee, the best one that I have found these days is something called SoundCloud. Do you know SoundCloud? No. It's... um fairly new. I think it just started maybe a year and a half ago or so. But um, if you, it, what's really, really great about it is that it, it's set up specifically for sharing audio. A lot of, uh, there are a lot of ways you can share audio, like for example through YouTube, by putting a picture at the beginning and then just let the sound play. and Don't change the picture. So you can use YouTube. iTunes, I've used iTunes to uh, share podcasts. I still do. My own podcast is on a podcast network, which, you know, that's something that you might want to do as a board, for example, is to have a place where student work can be shared on the board site, for example, and have the widget so it can be downloaded. What I like about SoundCloud, though, is um, it is um, you can have private listening groups and you, you can also have public listening groups. What you do is it's a very, very easy upload, and when it's uploaded, you see the whole WAV file there. You just click on the big play button, and it just plays all the way through. And I use it both for public stuff. Like if you go to mine, for example, if you go to www.soundcloud.com, all you have to do is search under Victoria Fenner, and you'll see some of the stuff that I've posted. I also post stuff with collaborators too. I'm working on a CBC piece right now and the man who is the other half of the composition, I've been able to share drafts with him that no one else can download. So it's really, really handy if you only want to email it to a certain select group, like for example, the, the, your other class members, or if they want to email it to their parents, it comes across as a public or a private feed that only the people who have been given permission can access. And what I really love about SoundCloud is there's a little bar across the bottom. So if you get to minute two, for example, and you hear a really great sound that you want to comment on, you can actually write a column and write something in the bar below that says, hey, I really like that sound. Or if you're critiquing a student's work, you can say, I think you need to boost this a little bit. It's really SoundCloud is a really, really great uh, thing for, for sharing, uh, sharing sounds. And you can also post it to Facebook. You can post it to a lot of the uh, social media sites. The reason why there are more video sites than there are audio sites is because the music companies clued in really, really early on that sharing MP3s would be a very bad idea because people could potentially share their artists. So that's one of the reasons why there aren't many uh, audio sharing sites. But it's starting now that people have the iPhones and, and they're able to upload stuff. Uh, one of the common um, iPhone applications, which is not just for iPhone, but for all kinds of phones, but it's mostly associated with iPhone, it's called Audioboo. And so audio booths are, you can either do little voice messages from your cell phone or you can upload them from your, your computer. So audio boo and SoundCloud, I would say, are the most promising ones out there right now. So, and um, in terms of how podcasts can be shared, we're always thinking high tech, we're always thinking internet. But think back to the days in early radio when people would sit around and listen to a speaker. For people who, uh, one of the, the things I was hired for once about five or six years ago was to do a radio workshop for a bunch of kids who were, like, they were pretty wild. They were not great at listening, and we, I was told by the teacher who hired us that she wanted us to do this not so much about radio, but because she wanted them 
to learn how to listen. And it was amazing because we were there for three days and first day we couldn't get them to listen at all. The last day that we were there, they were all sitting in a circle telling each other to be quiet so that they could hear what they, they were all saying to each other. It was really, really an empowering thing for these kids and to have someone else sit around and actually listen to them was something I don't think ever happens to them very often. So it's there's something very, very powerful that happens when people share their voices. And going back to the reasons why I started in radio, it's a lot of people find this hard to believe that I was a very, very shy teenager. I was given a microphone in a community radio station when I was 18, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I have something to say and somebody's listening. And it's, it's a tremendously empowering thing. And sometimes being able to look at the people who are listening to you is, is, is even more powerful than sending things out into the ether and you don't know who's listening.